let me talk about what I call electricity 2.0, which is the new architecture of energy. Um, and I, 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 as always, I want to take you back a little bit. Um, three decades ago, um, this was the world of information technology. We had a big mainframe out there, or in the case of publishing, we had a big printer, if anyone worked in uh, publishing in the past, we had a big printer out there, and we had fairly passive users in here, readers or whatnot. Um, information basically used to move one way, from the Chronicle to us, from the newspaper to us, from the mainframe to us, okay? Us, mere humans, could not actually generate information. Uh, basically, IT was autocratic and top-heavy. IT happened out there, okay? Uh, only they could generate, store, transmit, use, and sell information. We could not. We could just buy it, okay? And the big thing was data was scarce and expensive. Now, here's the newspaper industry as an example of the old architecture of information. This is their revenues. Up and to the right, don't you like that? Uh, from the 1950s. Up and to the right, that's the old architecture of information. And then, of course, the PC, the internet, the cell phone, and other technologies transformed not just IT, but transformed the architecture of information technology, right? So today, anyone, anyone with a cell phone, anyone with a PC, anyone with Twitter or Facebook or a blog is actually publishing, generating data. Anyone can generate, use, store, transmit, and sell data. And we all do, right? So that flipped the way that information is created and stored and sold. Data now is distributed. Anyone can do it and democratic. It's embedded pretty much in anything. It's abundant and it's cheap. It's actually free. It's so free we don't know what to do with it. We actually pay for uh, data to go away. It's called spam, right? Now, here is the powerful newspaper industry since the internet came out, okay? And like a lot of things, like, you know, going from film to digital and from, uh, you know, landlines to cell phones, it happens very quickly. When it happens, it happens very quickly. Now, energy today is the architecture of energy today is what the architecture of information was 30 years ago. Think about it. We have big power plants out there, coal or gas or nukes or whatever, that generate uh, and transmit the, the uh, power to us. And what do we do? We just flip a switch. So the power comes one way and the money goes the other way. It's the same architecture that information used to have. Now, technology advances, some of which I have talked about today, in generation, in storage, in distribution, and usage uh, of energy are turning this architecture upside down. And the same thing that happened in data is going to happen in energy. So anyone, anyone with a PV panel, anyone with a, with a wind turbine or whatnot, will be able to generate, store, transmit, and sell energy. Energy will be distributed, and this is important for us in cities, and democratic. It'll be embedded into houses, into cars. Cars will be basically will have a big battery that, that they can plug in and get energy or sell energy to the grid. Think about that. And it'll be clean, abundant, and cheap. 
Let me give you one example that's happening already. In New Zealand, there is a company called PowerShop. This, is, uh, this was started by a former student of mine. Basically, this is like an eBay for power. Anyone can come into PowerShop and sell their production of electricity, and anyone can come into PowerShop to buy electricity online instantly. So you don't have to commit to SCE or PGE or whoever. Basically, you come here uh, and say, okay, my next 200 kilowatt hours at eight cents or whatever I'm gonna buy from, I don't know, there's gonna be Red Sox power, San Francisco Giants power, you can brand the power, you can buy clean, you can buy dirty. Basically, it's like an eBay. Anybody can buy and anybody can sell. This is happening today. Okay, this is happening today in New Zealand. Uh, they, they, they compete. Uh, basically, it's gonna be a change in the way that energy is uh, produced and sold. And this company makes basically a percent of the transaction. So some of these things that I'm telling you are happening already, are happening already. So just like that publishing curve, uh, power companies are gonna keep going and at some point, boom, when they drop, they're gonna drop. Um, and today in energy, especially here in California, is like the internet was in the mid 80s. Uh, so if you look at internet growth, starting in 1977, can you believe that? I was at Cisco 1993, when Cisco was two little buildings here in, in actually in Mountain View, okay? Look at 1993, we had uh, fewer than, somewhere between 100,000 uh, and less than a million, certainly, um, internet hosts. But the best was yet to come. In California, we have 100,000 installations of PV. Our goal for uh, 2020 is a million. Look at the numbers. The internet did it in three years. Okay, that's what we want to do. We have eight years. Uh, I said that uh, in Germany, they already are at a million rooftops. Uh, in California, we actually went 100x. We grew from 1,000 installations to 100,000 in 10 years. Now we want to go from 100 to 1 million. We are on the cusp of a big, big, big wave that's going to change everything in energy. Uh, how do you take advantage of this? of this big wave. 